So welcome back to another Pinterest tutorial. This time I am teaching you how to design pins in Canva. So first off, this is canva.com. It's an amazing free design tool. So first off, I just wanna say that it is free, but they offer a 30 day free trial of uh, Canva for Work or Canva Pro or something or other. And it's really worth doing that because you can use some of the pro features um, like the brand kit, which I'm gonna take you through briefly now, um, and then save all your fonts and colors down and then cancel your, um, your pro account before they charge you and then remain using the free version and you still keep all of your branding. And it's just a really great way to have all your branding in one place. Um, and then when you create new designs, it does it automatically with your branding. So this is what the brand kit looks like. You can see that I can't do anything with this because I'm back on the free account, but I can still see all my fonts. As soon as I move my mouse away, you'll be able to see my fonts. All of my colors are top left and my logos are there. My logos are actually uploaded, but you just can't see them. And then also bottom right, these are some fonts that I uploaded, some Google fonts that I uploaded. But you can only do that when you have the, I think it's Canva for work, but yeah, totally worth doing just for 30 days for free. There's, there's quite a few other really cool features as well, but to be honest, if you're just designing pins and stuff, it's not worth it. So this is the free design school also. There's tons of tutorials uh, teaching you to design logos and um, all sorts. They once featured one of my pins <laughs> in a tutorial, which was pretty cool. It wasn't even a very good pin, but anyway. <laughs> so there's a couple of ways that you can design pins. They have pre-built designs, as you can see on this underneath create a design, there's blog graphics. Uh, Pinterest graphics, social media graphics, um, which you might use with quotes for Instagram, uh, Facebook if you lose, use Facebook a lot, and they're all pre-designed um, to, to be the perfect uh, custom dimension for whichever social media or whatever that is, it's being used for. However, the Pinterest graphic the pre-made one in Canva is the is not the custom dimension. It's not the dimensions that I like to use. I like to use six hundred by eleven hundred, and this one is seven hundred two by or seven hundred by eleven hundred two. So let's go ahead and use the Canva pre-made Pinterest graphic to create a pin that you can use. So along the left hand side, uh, there are a heap of different genres of pre-made graphics that you can use. Uh, they're categorized into kind of subcategories, food, um, photography, some other stuff. You can see here that this one has a paid element and that's why it has the grid lines across it. Um, but if you pick the ones that have free in the bottom right hand corner, they're completely free. Everything's free. But even with the ones that have that are paid for, you can delete the paid elements, if that makes sense, and still make it free. So let's pick, I'm just gonna type in camera at the top and it'll bring up anything that has a camera element. This one's pretty cool. I've seen this, uh, this Canva picture used quite a lot. I think I've even used it in some of mine. And it's, com like I say, it's completely free and copyright free as well, so. Let's go ahead and use that one. So you just click into it and then it will populate your pin. So you can change every element in this or you can keep it pretty much as it is and just change the text. We're just gonna keep it simple and just change the text in this tutorial. I'm just gonna change the writing, so blog advice. That's a little bit big, so we're gonna make it a bit smaller. Yeah, that looks a bit better. And then in the middle, blog advice I wish I known, or maybe I wish I knew. You 
you can just play around with the font sizes. Also worth noting that top right, this comes pre-made with um, the f whatever font the uh, designer of this had chosen, but you can change all of those elements. So if you want to change it to fit your brand kit, which is absolutely what you should be doing, then you can just click in and change that. Make sure you put your website at the bottom. That's what I've just done there. Really important to have your website because if... Um, if there's any copyright issues, which sometimes there are, and I've found people that have stolen my pins, you can just report it really quickly and easily to Pinterest and they will remove it. I've had a great experience with their customer service team. They, they tend to be really hot on that. And when you've got your website on there that proves it's yours, it just makes things a whole lot easier. So the next thing I want to do is type in the title that I want the pin to be saved as. Um, and as I've talked about, this is an important SEO element. So make sure you've got your keyword in there. This is a pretty standard format that I use. Canva saves automatically. So you can see just left of that, it says it's saving changes. And then it will say all changes saved. And then you just hit the button on the right. And that is it for doing the pre-made design. So let's create a design completely from scratch using those custom dimensions that I told you about earlier. So I'm going to put in 600 by 1100 and then just create a new design. So there's a heap of pre-made kind of templates on the left here, a lot of dogs and cats. <laughs> and you can do the same, you could search for an element um, if you wanted to. There are loads of really, really beautiful ones in here as well. So it is worth having a look around if you really don't want to design one. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design your own. As I mentioned, at the top are all my brand colours. So let's go for pink. Um, and we'll add an element in. Let's pop a circle in. Make it a bit smaller. And you can see these lines are showing, are giving you a guidance of when it's centered. So there it's within a square. And if you move it along a little bit, a line will come up in the middle to say it's dead center. And that's quite impo important for design. And let's add some lines in to separate it. You can do the same here. Just shuffle it around until you get the lines to say it's dead center. And then I think we need to add some text. As you can see, these are all with my brand font. So let's go ahead and add a heading. Make this short and snappy, and this is um, your post title or something similar. So best social media advice ever. We like how that looks, so let's have a tweak of that. It's important that it's eye catching. And with this brusher font, um, I like to keep it as simple as possible because it can be quite hard to read. Don't like the capitals either. Yeah, that's better. Make sure it's center. Now let's change some of these colors. So if you just hit on that rainbow A, you'll be able to tweak the colours um, as much as you like. But in this bit of text, putting one of the most important elements, which is the website. Now we want to make it stand out. So you can just use a, a big square and then kind of shrink it and make it resize it so that it looks like a rectangle. To make sure that you can see the text behind it, you just need to reposition the rectangle just by hitting the position and then saying backwards. And then we need to change the text color because that's the same color as the rectangle. So we'll make it maybe white and make it a bit bigger. Not that big. <laughs> it's a bit of a... Uh, Suck it and see, Jobby. You just have to keep playing until you're happy with it. 
like I say, I am no graphic designer, so <laughs> sometimes this takes me a while. And typically I create three or four Pinterest templates a quarter. Um, and then and then I just use them so that I and change the text so that I don't have to keep designing. I don't really like the big rectangle to be honest, so we'll just take that away. And then make this readable. Yeah, that's better. And let's add a bit of that body text that I was talking about. <laughs> so you can just keep playing around, it's quite fun. So something like this, my best social media tips to um, increase your blog's traffic or to help grow your blog. Something like that, something a bit juicy that makes people want to read. Not clickbait in a Daily Mail kind of way though, you know. And that just makes it look a little bit more enticing and a bit more finished. Now another thing that you can do is add um, a background. Obviously you can add a picture if you want to add a picture. And that's just uh, left where it says upload. You can add pictures there. But for the purpose of today, I am going to pick a kind of background image. Again, these you can see which ones are free and which ones are paid for. That's pretty cool. Now, something that I really, really like about Canva is that you can... Let's change the wording, the font, so you can see it. You can play with the transparency of an image or anything. So if you just click that kind of grid looking thing up there, you can tweak it down or, or make it, basically you're making it more or less opaque. And that's really, really helpful if you've got a pinnable image that's quite busy um, and perhaps is taking away from the text and making the pin hard to read. Obviously I would ideally don't have that, but <laughs> if you uh, just, that's your style of photography or whatever, you can use the transparency button to kind of make it a bit less, more or less opaque so that you can read the text. Then we'll just save. Make sure the tips, uh, the title is correct and has your keywords in. I'm gonna add um, blogging advice and then my name. So something I, I like to do, I design three pins at a time, so normally, so uh, I'll just call it hashtag one. So let's just go ahead and download. So download, it'll suggest ping, that's the correct type. And then depending on how many design elements there is, it will take more or less time. 